I remember doing this clinic like 10 years ago and uh, I had to, I always get bugged about it. I had to eat battle pads out. So the OGs that have been here for a while probably can remember it. And I was just uh, really anxious and nervous to the point where I, 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 I had this accent, this fake accent that I brought out. I had this southern twang as I was speaking. And man, oh man, it was really anxious for me and it was tough. And, and that kind of started my journey in thinking about you know, anxiety and how I could better manage it so I could be present in the moment and um, be present for my players, be available. So that put me on the path. And I'd say the first thing is when you think about basketball mindfulness, I think it's kind of like, you know, is it woo-woo? Is it spirituality? You know, what is it? And I think the biggest thing today from this presentation is just to find what feels good. You know, like that's the biggest thing we're all going through is to investigate, you know, what we're experiencing, putting ourselves out there and um, going through these presentations and saying, okay, man, what fits for me? You know, what makes sense? And then when I go back to my program, you know, eventually I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to have a system in place and, and I'm going to feel really good about it. Um, I got into, how did I get into mindfulness? I first started actually when, when Kobe Bryant passed away. Um, I went, I did a, a big research project on him because I wanted to learn more about his life. You know, I was, I was interested. Um, so I, I pretty much went to my lap, my laptop and I downloaded uh, every podcast interview, uh, every post-game interview, and I went through and I started clipping it and, and categorizing things and, you know, figuring, okay, what could I learn from Kobe? What could I go back and, and, and help our players with? And the one thing he talked about from going from three championships to two championships, as he kind of, you know, transformed and beca became this black mamba, he talked about the mindfulness of the game, the spirituality of the game. And that's really the only reason I call it mindfulness is because Kobe called it that, you know, and Kobe had an influence on my life. So I just said, okay, I'll just call it basketball mindfulness when I, when I work with players. Um, so, so that's, that, that's that. And then, um, you know, the next thing was I, I was working at university of Regina and I had players and we're doing all the player development, man. We're on the court. Uh, we're doing game like practice. Uh, we're doing the video. They have a sense of autonomy. It feels great. But as soon as we went on the floor and we had a game, we had a few players um, that we were working with. It didn't matter, you know, all this information that we were giving them. It didn't matter what the scout said. They just went back to their instincts. You know, they went back to past behaviors that they had learned in the past that, had, had, that gave them success. So the biggest challenge is... I think, or my biggest frustration has always been transfer and retention. How do we get transfer and retention? The thing that I'm figuring out right now is if you have a player who's stressed out, um, who can't manage their physiology, they're mismanaging their, their physiology, how can they learn? How can they be receptive to the information? How can they take chances and apply um, what you're coaching them on, you know, through their plan? So. That, that's really how I started. That's how I got into mindfulness. And pretty much I've been digging into every kind of sports psychology book, every kind of mindfulness book, um, starting to get into spirituality a bit and, and learn as much as I can. And then having conversations with athletes. And again, finding what feels good, finding what fits. Does this resonate with you? If it doesn't, all good. We'll keep it moving. So today I want to give you a few different ideas for how you can uh, start to apply basketball mindfulness on the floor, kind of giving you a breakdown of, of what that means and, and some actual concepts, some concrete concepts. So what is mindfulness? I kind of decided this is what it is. You can probably go on the internet and find a different definition. But to me, it's having this awareness, right, to um, be with what is, you know, see things how they are, uh, understand what your, your needs are, understand what your wants are, understand some of the thoughts that are coming in and out of your mind, at the same time being aware of what other people are concerned about, what their needs are. Once you have that basic level of awareness, then you decide where your attention goes, right? You know, come in here, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of fear. Is that where my attention is going to go? Can I acknowledge that, that that's coming up for me? And then shift my attention back into what actually helps me. What's helpful for me to perform in the moment, right? So I shift my attention, and now I just have to go for it, 
right? I have to uh, be assertive. I have to take action. The next thing we talk about with our athletes is acceptance, right? Like, man, there's going to be times where you put yourself out into the world, you put yourself onto the floor, and things just aren't going to go the way you thought they were going to go. It's not going to align with your expectations. So the key then is can you allow or accept some of it, accept the things that are outside of your control. You know, so what's out of my control? Can I accept that that's out of my control and, and let it be? And then if I can't accept it, the next thing is, can I start to just allow it, right? So what am I feeling? What am I experiencing? Can I accept a little bit of this? And then over time, um, I'm going to be able to accept the whole thing and move on completely, right? I had a, a player I was working with this summer. She was trying out for the Canadian national team. Her lifelong goal was to make the Canadian national team. She ended up getting cut, unfortunately. So part of it was through her mindfulness experience, now she's got to go play pro. She's in this. She's a, you know, this is her career. How do you keep it moving? You know, so we use mindfulness to just say, well, I may not accept that I'm, I'm not going to play for the team, but can you accept, you know, small parts of it? You know, maybe letting go of some of that anticipation that I was experiencing just leading up to the event, you know, like traveling with my team or having those cool breakfasts and lunches and dinners, um, uh, you know, working with my team. So anyway, that's kind of the idea with mindfulness. That's how I, how I think about it. Now, if I was going to work with a team, you know, and, and how would I introduce mindfulness? How would I get people to start thinking about this? The first thing that I would do is I'd pull up clips of Kobe. You know, I'd pull up clips of Kobe, I'd pull up clips of, of Steph Curry, and get them just speaking about it. You know, and it, this is how they see it. Does this align for you? Do, you? do you experience this? When you go into a game, do you feel a little anxious? Do you feel a little nervous? Um, do you feel maybe sometimes that you, you four shots, you get sped up on the floor? How do you regulate? How do you read your state? So that, that's the first thing. We have kind of a back and forth with questions. The next thing I would talk about is uh, the window of tolerance. Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of the window of tolerance. Nobody. Perfect. All right. That's good. All right. Cool. So the window of tolerance. Here's what, what I want you to imagine, visualize, or think about is if you were sailing. Does anybody sail? Put your hand up if you, if you sail. Oh, man. We got one. One person. So if you're sailing, right, and you're on the water, and the water's fairly calm, right? So you're here. Oh, man. Let's see here. Okay, you guys can picture it. This is a sailboat, all right? So we got this sailboat, and we're here, and we're on the water. It's fairly calm, right? Now, as the water starts to get a little bit choppy, you're still saying to yourself, everything's okay. You know, I feel safe. I, I can adapt. I'm flexible. I'm fine. So this Right here, I can manage this stress, right? But let's say you're sailing, you know, and you're here, and then some clouds roll in, right? And then it starts raining, and then it starts, um, you know, there's some lightning, right? Your window of tolerance may shrink a bit as you're a little bit triggered by everything going outside of you, and, and, and you're not safe. You start to activate your fight or flight response. Right? So this is outside of the window of tolerance. Below here is if we had, you know, you're on the shore just kind of hanging out, and you see your friend, you know, on the sailboat, on the water, and you're just thinking to yourself, man, I don't know if I should go sailing today. You know, I, I'm thinking about maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, but you're in this passive, passive state here. Right? So to optimize your performance, you want to be within the window of tolerance. So above here, we call this, I won't even write it because you guys can't see it, hyperarousal, right? So we're in hyperarousal up here. You're in fight or flight. Down here, you're in hypoarousal, right? So you're in a, more of a freeze response, right? So what you need to take away from this is with your athletes, if they're in their window of tolerance, they can recall information, they can learn, they can adapt, right? They feel safe, right? Now, if they're in here, they get into the limbic brain or the mouse brain. And what the mouse brain is, is avoiding pain, seeking pleasure. It's your, uh, your survival response. And thanks, coach. Thanks, boss. 
run the show. It, it's your, your survival brain. So what you do is now when you're, when you're going through it, you're going to go back to your responses that you've experienced in the past that have kept you safe. Right? So if you think about it, you're on the floor and you're trying to teach this player all this information, you know, in pick and roll, we're going to down the, down the pick and roll, we're going to get in the ball handler, and they've never seen it before, you know, and they can't manage the stress, man, all that stuff's going to go out the window and they're going to guard the pick and roll that's gave them success in the past, right? So part of our goal, I think, as coaches is number one, can I regulate? Can I regulate myself? The athletes, can they regulate, put themselves back here and recognize that, hey, I'm safe. I can take chances. I can put myself out there. I can get in the ball handler and guard it how coach wants it, right? So the idea is, is you have to start with just reading your state. Like right now, you read your body. How do you feel? Probably most of us feel pretty safe, you know, just being in, in the gym and listening to me speak. Um, but when you, when you get triggered and when you get put into this state, can you bring yourself back down? Can you read um, what happens? So a couple things that may happen, you might get tense, uh, your heart rate is pounding, um, you might start sweating, um, orally breathing in and out through your mouth really fast and rapid and shallow, right? So today I'm going to give you a few tools to how, uh, learn how to read your state, but also regulate your state and then learn to reinforce your state, but at the same time apply that to basketball, uh, cool, everybody give me a thumbs up if you're on the same page. All right, man, perfect. Okay, so here's what I want you to do, okay? I want you to put your right hand on your chest. Players can do this too. Right hand on your chest, your left hand on your belly, okay? And all I want you to do is breathe in through your mouth and out through your mouth. You can do that a few times and just feel that. So... In and out through your mouth and feel that. Where is, you know, where is that happening? Is it happening more in your chest or more in your belly? All right, you can feel that. Now, if you do the same thing and you breathe in and out through your nose, so same thing, breathe in and out through your nose. You can feel it's more in your belly. Right? So when you breathe in and out through your nose, you get greater suction and the air goes deeper into your lungs. If you can activate um, the lower portion of your lungs, you're going to release dopamine. Um, you're going to release serotonin. Right? If you're breathing through your, um, the higher part of your lungs, and up the upper part of your lungs, you're going to release adrenaline. You're going to release cortisol. Right? So if you can get back to nasal breath and you can breathe through your belly, you're going to help regulate your, st your state, you're going to feel safe, your body's going to feel safe, and you're going to be able to calm down over time. Right? So that's a strategy we talk about. The first thing is, can I get back to a nasal breath? Can I breathe deeper into my lungs and activate those, those hormones? Okay? Uh, the next thing I want you to do, I want you to put your hands on your sides, right? just like this, on your ribs. Okay, and as you do this, um, I want you to kind of feel the pressure, right? So as you inhale, feel the expansion outwards. So I feel the expansion. And then as I contract and exhale, I can feel the, con the contraction. So as I breathe, if people talk about belly breathing. I'm not just belly breathing like this. I want to feel an expansion through my lateral, um, through, uh, laterally through my, through my ribs, Okay, so those are just some basic things when you're breathing to regulate that you want to be mindful of. Uh, cool. So, talking about gears of breathing. Okay, so the next thing, gears of breathing. All this does is it's a tool for you to downregulate. So once you've realized that you're out of it, you're triggered, and you're anxious, how do you bring yourself back? We're going to do it with the players. And it's real simple. So guys, as I explain this, I want you to do it with me. And if, if you're up, you know, sitting and hanging out, you can do it too. So the gears of breathing, you've got five gears. The fifth gear is hyperventilation. So you use these for short periods, um, intense periods, right? Like let's say we have a, a possession. I'm guarding, I'm in the game, I'm pressuring. We run in transition, you know, we're playing offense, we come back. I might be hyperventilating for a second. I might be mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth breathing, right, in and out through my mouth, right? The key for you to be able to regulate your, your state and bring yourself back is to get to a nasal breath, 
right? So as soon as I can inhale and I go out the mouth, I'm already starting the process of regulating and putting myself back in the state, right? So it might start to... And I might start to slow it down. And the key is, if I want to bring myself back and I want to regulate, i got to focus on the exhale. So I want to try to lengthen that exhale. So it might be... Then to get to gear three, I'm going to go in through the nose, and I'm going to hold, and hold, and then get to an exhale out the mouth. So I go... Hold, out through the mouth. In through the nose, hold, out through the mouth. Right? So again, I'm gradually coming down. The next thing, gear number two, I'm going to go in through the nose, so I go in through the nose, and I'm going to go out through the nose. Right? So gradually I'm starting to control it. And then once I get to gear one, uh, this is where we start to activate different breath patterns. Right? So now I may use box breathing. Uh, box breathing is really simple. It's in the nose for four seconds. You use a hold. You uh, then exhale for four seconds, and you hold again. Right? And then now you're, you're balancing your system of sympathetic and parasympathetic being in between. Okay, give me a thumbs up if everybody's on the same page, if you're feeling it. Okay, cool. So guys, we're going to do this really quick. So I just took you through the gears of breathing. You're going to sit down. I'm going to take you through it. And then we're going to get into four and play five on five, and I'm going to stop it, and you're going to get back to the gears of breathing. Okay? So I'm just going to move this, Adam. Where can I put this? Just uh, right here? Okay. All right. Not blocking anybody's sight. We're okay? Yeah? All right. Okay. So, again, you can do this with me if you're in the audience here. The first thing I want you to focus on is to ground yourself, to feel your feet on the floor. All right? So feel your feet on the floor. Okay, the next thing you're going to focus on is balance, right? So you want to try to even out both sides. So I want to just notice that there's an even distribution with my feet, right? Okay, and then suspension, I'm kind of tall, I'm upright, I'm not stiff. Good, okay. So the first thing you need to do if you're looking to regulate is to ground yourself. Feel your, feel your feet on the floor, um, just kind of tune into your body, right? And then once you ground yourself... Uh, you can, I'm safe, I'm good, then I get back to my breath, right? Then I get back to my breath. So what I want you guys to do, just for about, I don't know, 10 seconds, you're going to hyperventilate through, in through your mouth, out through your mouth, so just like that. So go ahead, start. Good. And then you're going to get in through the nose, out through the mouth, and I want you to focus on your exhale and really slow it down. Okay, now I want, we're in gear three now. I want you to inhale through the nose and pause, and then exhale again throughout the mouth. So pause, and then out through the mouth. Really good. Pause, out through the mouth. Good. And then now just get back to nasal breathing. In through the nose, out through the nose. Really good. Okay, now I want you to add that pattern that we talked about, the box breathing. So you're going to inhale for four seconds. So I got you. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. The key with the gears is not to rush through them. It's not to say, well, I want to get from gear five to gear one as fast as I can. Because if you move too quickly as you go through the gears, you probably will create more anxiety um, because you're managing uh, your CO2. I'm not going to get into that, but the idea is to go real slow. Okay, and really honor each gear. Don't go too quickly. Okay, so I need 10 guys. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. You're keen. Come on, yeah, yeah. Seven, eight, nine, ten, I think. All right, let's see. Okay, we've got just four. This is good, guys. 
Yeah, thanks, Dan. You're good. You're good. All right. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. All right. I need one of you guys to come on this side. All right. Yep. Perfect. Okay. And you guys are all going to flip to black just so we're not confused. Oh, you guys are all black. Can you guys go to red? Yeah. You can stay. Shirt. Don't worry about it. No, we're good. Okay. All right. Okay, so all we're going to do, real simple, we're playing five on five. There's going to be a 12-second shot clock. We're going to go up and down, okay? My goal, guys, is just to get you to gear five, just to gas you out a bit, and then for you then to use the gears. I'll guide you through the gears when we stop. Make sense? Okay. Ready? You guys are going this way? You guys are going this way? Okay, play. Let's go. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Yeah, here we go, all the way, all the way, here we go. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 12, 11, 10, 9. Good job, here we go, pace, let's go, fast, 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 up the floor. Sprint, let's go. Yeah, good. 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Other way, quick, let's go. Sprint. Push, push, push. Good. Last time, let's go quick, quick with pace. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Perfect. Okay, ball down. That's okay. Ball down. Okay, so just recognize what gear you're at, right? So you might be at gear 5. If you're at gear 5, that's okay. If you're at gear four, you're going in through the nose, out through the mouth. Really good. And you can keep walking, guys, as you, as you recover here. Yep. Good. Okay. Okay, so if you're at gear four, in through the nose, out through the mouth. If you're at gear three, we're going to add the pause. Right? So now it's in through the nose, pause, whole, uh, pause, exhale. We can walk back. And then when you're ready, you're going to get back to nasal, in through the nose, out through the nose. Right. Really good. Okay. One of the telltale signs to tell if someone's really tired is just to see if they're mouth breathing, right? Like if they're opening their mouth to breathe, and you can just notice a lot of tension, they're probably mismanaging their physiology by over-breathing, right? We've got a lot of athletes. That's good, guys. You can sit down for a second. I've worked with a few athletes this summer um, through player development. Um, they would overbreathe, and they'd work um, harder uh, or, or work at a pace where it didn't make sense, right? So they're overbreathing, gassed out, and we're just doing some shooting. So getting them to slow down with their breath, right, using the gears in through the nose, out through the mouth, adding that pause really allowed them to you know, channel that energy in different ways, right? Instead of gassing themselves out in the first five, 10 minutes of the workout. So that was really good. Good job, guys. Can we give a round of applause for the, the helpers here? Okay. Okay, so the next thing is uh, PVAD. Anybody hear of PVAD? Put your, put your hand up if you've heard of PVAD. Okay, really good. All right, so I'm not sure if it was Mike McKay, uh, Basketball Canada, I'm not sure who came up with it, but it's an acronym for position, vision. So if I have vision, if I'm in position, I have vision. If I have vision, I can anticipate. And if I can anticipate, I can make decisions, right? Uh, my brother played, played for the Bisons a few years ago, and when he started as a freshman, he was something like zero for 16 from three or one for 16 from three, um, and for, for his role, he was expected to make catch-and-shoot shots. The next year, when he went into his second year, um, his percentage was something like 42% from three. So I asked him, I said, you know, what was, what was the change that you made? How did you really increase your shooting from year one? Like, zero for 16 to 42% in your, in your second year. The one thing he talked about, he said, well, you know, my job is at a transition. I'm going to run as hard as I can to the corner and I'm going to get all the way down to the baseline, and I'm just going to get the heck out of the way for other people to drive it, right? And he's going to get all the way here, and as soon as he gets here, he's really going to focus on his vision, right? So he gets here, and instead of watching the ball come up the floor and really having tunnel vision here, I'm going to take a peek at the rim, take a peek at the rim, take a peek, see the ball widen out, 
see the rim. And he's just going to continue to open his lens. The one thing they've found, if you're in that sympathetic response, right, you're, you're too aroused, you're anxious, one of the things that happens is you get tunnel vision, right? So if you think about your players, if they're really anxious when they get on the floor and their vision goes like this, how can they anticipate and how can they make decisions, right? So one of the things you want to work on with your athletes is helping them to open up their lens. If, if you start to feel tense, um, anxious, can I open up my lens? One of the things you can do right now, it's real simple, um, just to kind of get a feel, you put both fingers out, guys, you can do this too, right? Everybody can do this in the stands too, just to, just to feel it out, to practice it, is you just start to focus on your fingers and just start to widen out your lens, right? Where I can just see both fingers and I start to widen out. Another thing you can do, we've got this big, this big gym, right? You can start here and focus on maybe on the Bison logo and then just start to expand out this way, right? So recognizing if you've got anxious athletes, use your vision. That, that's a tool that you can use to regulate on top of using the breath to disrupt these, these patterns um, that they're experiencing. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to give you few more things here. So the waterfall, the waterfall breathing. I use, I use this on the way here. So this is, a, this is a strategy you can use. So once you've read your state and you need to downregulate, um, you can use the waterfall breathing. And all the waterfall breathing is, is I want to focus on my exhale, right? I want to focus on my exhale. And all I'm going to do is I breathe in and then I'm just going to uh, breathe out, and as I exhale, I'm going to exhale only 50%. So I exhale 50%. I'm going to hold, and then I'm going to exhale one more time, the rest of the 50%. And then I get back to the inhale. Right? And I start again. So inhale, you guys can do this. We go inhale. And then when you're going to exhale, just 50%, and then hold. And then exhale again. Great, and now restart. Get back to the inhale. Great, then you're going to exhale 50%. Once you exhale, hold, and then exhale again. Really good. Really good. So that's one thing you can do, right, to downregulate. If I needed to upregulate, right, let's say I was kind of frozen a bit, I was a little bit passive, and I wasn't... Um, you know, taking action. I was indecisive. I was just flooded with all this information. Um, the next thing that I could do, okay, is we, could, we do ladder breathing. So we just do the opposite, right? So we now inhale. So I inhale about 50%. I hold. Then I inhale again. And then I exhale. And then I hit it again. Hold. Inhale again. Exhale. So that's if I wanted to activate. Every time I breathe in, my heart rate goes up. Every time I breathe out, my heart rate goes down. Right? So I'm activating my, my sympathetic on the in-breath, and then I activate my parasympathetic uh, on the out-breath. My heart, my heart rate goes down. Right? So just understanding that is a way that you can start to regulate. Cool. Uh, the next thing that I got. Now let's say you've got a game. You know, you're, you're getting ready for a game. And, and your athletes are going in and they're getting ready to compete. They need to be in this focused, alert state, but they don't want to be anxious. Right? So what we want to do is we want to learn to balance out these systems. Right? So we've got sympathetic, we've got parasympathetic. If I just downregulate, 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 and I put myself into this like deep meditative state and I'm almost sleeping on the floor, I'm not activated and engaged for when I have to play. You know, that's going to take away from my performance. So what we want to do, we, we, have, we know how to regulate, we know how to downregulate. We can also balance out the systems, right? We can balance out both systems. So one thing that we can do is we can focus on the box breathing like we talked about. So we have this ratio of four seconds in, four second hold, four second exhale, four second hold, and you just repeat that. Uh, the next thing you can do, like, has anybody went to yoga? Thumbs up, you went to yoga? No yogis. We got three yogis. All right. So 
they talk about alternate uh, nasal breathing, right? So alternate nasal breathing is understanding that every time I breathe out my, my right side, I'm activating my sympathetic. Every time I breathe out my left side, I'm activating my parasympathetic. So what I do is I take my thumb. You can do this with me if you like. You put it on your right nostril, right? You take your, your, uh, your pointer finger and your uh, middle finger. You put it on your palm. So you kind of make this kind of weird. You got your, I guess it's your ring finger. So right, right finger on your nasal. You breathe in through your nose. And then you're going to pinch the other side and go out through the right side. Then I'm going to go in through the right side. I'm going to close off the right side, and I'm going to go outside the, go the left. I'm going to go in through the left. Right? And all I'm doing is I'm balancing out my system. So instead of going all the way down with my down regulation or having to really go all the way up and then starting to get anxious, I can just balance out my systems with those two things. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Really good. Okay, I need 10 guys on the floor. Just 10. Hey, just 10. Okay. So another thing we'll do, you know, the crazy thing is, man, you only need five minutes. You only need five minutes in practice to work on this stuff. You can do it in the beginning, um, at the end, but ideally, as the guys are practicing, you can do it during practice, right? So if we were going to get, uh, you know what, let's go, hold up. Can we flip? We need one more? Yeah, you got it. Okay, I need five, five black, five red. Okay, so let's say we're playing five on five. We're going to start to use trigger words to help them uh, focus their attention, right? So a few things that I've done in the past, I, so I got five red and five black again, five black and five red. It doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, five red. Here we go. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to go five on five. And I'm just going to call out MIT. Okay, so if I yell out MIT, all you guys are going to do individually is you're going to take a second to check in and focus on the most important thing for you, right, in this 5 on 5. Now, with our player development, when I was a university coach, we had a plan for every player, right? And we talked about, um, you know, your vision. We talked about an archetype. What are you going to become in the next couple of years? And then we talked about your MIT, Right, so what's going to give you the highest amount of interest um, for, your, for your time and energy you know, when, you in, when you get in the floor and play? So all the kids that we have that I have training with me have an MIT on their graphic, and we, we would also do this with our team. So when I was at the University of Regina, I'm running practice, I'd say, you know, MIT, and all the kids would know either individually, you're going to just check in with yourself, or we're going to meet as a team, talk about what's the most important thing that's going to impact the drill. Okay, so we're going to play 5 on 5. When I yell at MIT, you've got to stop everything, and you've got to meet with your team. It's like a team timeout. Okay, ready? Here we go. So we play, let's see here. Keeping our space in. All right, going the other way. That's all right. Here we go. Here we go. So we'll play a few, a few possessions here. Dan, the timer's not on the, on the thing. How much time do I have? It's not on. Okay. Okay. Right, and then stop. Stop, so I blow the whistle. MIT, MIT, so get your team together. Yeah, meet with your team quick. Right. Okay. Right, and we may have the coaches floating around, jumping in, just listening. Perfect. Okay, so that's, that's the first kind of trigger word or trigger phrase that we would use. Another thing we would do before the season even started is we would talk about the window of tolerance. How are you going to be able to regulate, bring your, either down-regulate or up-regulate? And what we talk about is zooming out and zooming in. So if I'm too zoomed in, I'm too focused, we say that you're, you're anxious, Right? You're in that sympathetic state. If I'm too zoomed out and I'm kind of flooded, I need to zoom in. Right? So we say for the players, 
when you're going through your own process, you think about all the success that you've had as a player, what's helped you refocus? Right? And we go through those strategies. Right? So now as we play, I may yell, zoom out. You know, so you, you got to get in, zoom out. What, what's your strategy? So as a group, you know, we might have to you know, focus on uh, down-regulating. Right? Zooming out means down-regulate. Right? If I zoom in, that mean, might mean focusing on my inhale and shortening my exhale. Right? So what are your strategies that you can say in a phrase, a word, two words, that helps redirect their attention? Right? We may use this um, not only just in practice, but as the kids come off the floor and they're playing and they're sitting down, I might just say zoom in or zoom out or MIT. And immediately, they know what to focus on. Because like I said in the beginning, the biggest thing, you think about our world right now, you, know, you think about just what's going on in the world, everybody has a cell phone. You know, I think, when's the earliest stage you guys had a cell phone? Or you looked at an iPad? See, they don't even remember, probably when they were a baby, right? They were looking at iPads and iPhones. As soon as you hear a notification, you, hear, you get a vibrate, what do you do? You focus, you focus on, you know, the cell phone. I want to I take that same concept and use it in my language when I'm coaching players and help them understand that there's all these options, there's all these things that you could be focusing on right now, but we're going to help guide your attention on the things that actually help you, right? You could focus on all that other stuff, the negative thinking, the anxiousness, maybe, uh, you know, coach said something that you didn't like. No, 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 bring yourself in, focus on the things that actually help you perform, right? So they'd be playing again, I yell at a trigger word, and then they, they just do what they do. They focus on their strategy, they focus on their process, Cool. All right, guys, take a seat. Really appreciate you. All right. Okay. So I'm going to do some shooting now. Okay, so I'll bring out who wants to do shooting. You want to do shooting? Yeah? All right. Okay. So we're going to come on the floor. Where's Adam? Is Adam in here? Dan, how much time do I got? I got 30 minutes? Oh, man, money. Okay, cool. All right, so with shooting, the big thing I've done with shooting, I've been working on with, with the kids, is how can we, especially when we're building someone's shot, not getting so consumed by the outcome, uh, you know, whether it goes in, whether it goes out, but just focusing on the feeling, you know, tuning into the body, feeling, finding what feels good, right? So one of the things we talk about, one of the first things we talk about with shooting is balance, Right? Can I have equal distribution on both sides? Can I be mindful of that, aware of that? You know, it's amazing. When I was growing up, I had the most broken shot of all time. You know, I had this shot where I'd go, you know, from here, I'd bring the ball, I'd lean on my left side, I'd bring it back here, I'd go here, and I'd shoot it. It was like the worst shot, it was ugly, you know, and I had to work on it. Um, but one of the things I realized in working with so many athletes is the first thing is, a lot of people, their balance is out of whack. We had a, a university player, one of the best players in high school last year, work with me. And one of the things he would do is he'd lean on his left side. And naturally, what would happen is the ball would come on the left side, it would come here, and it would go out that way. So the problem was, is there was all this energy. You think about it. You want to you shoot like Steph? You, you watch Steph play. Man, it, it's effortless, man. He, he just drives the ball up and out. You know, there's not this... You know, all this extra stuff that's going on. So we want to start to eliminate that. So we start with balance, right? Can you feel your feet on the floor? Am I evenly distributed, right? So that, let's say that's our MIT for this workout, right? MIT is balance, okay? So we may start, you know, something really simple. You want to use this ball or that ball? Yeah? Is that your ball? Yeah. All right. I like it. I like it, man. We're in it. Okay, so all we're going to do is you're just going to catch and shoot, all right? You're focusing on your balance, Right? Evenly distributed every time. You're up. I got you. I got you. Yep. Uh huh. All right. Okay. Cool. Really good. All right. So, if we just focus on difficulty, right? One through ten, how difficult was that if ten was extremely difficult? If one was extremely easy, where would you be? He said, so he said three. All right, so three. So I'm going to ask you, how could we make this shot um, more difficult? But again, our focus is balance. So how are we going to make this drill more difficult? 
Okay, so he talked about proximity. If he adds distance to the shot, so now you're going to back up. Okay, and you, is that the spot you want? Yeah? All right. So you're going to go up. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Two more. Up. Okay. Okay. Do you feel balanced? 100%? Lean in, lean in, like, uh, tension through both feet, pushing through the floor, feel good? Okay, what was the difficulty in terms of keeping your balance? A six. Five? Okay, so we're going to add, let's say, one more level to this, and we're going to make it more difficult. What could you add to it? You could keep going back. Right? I notice as players keep going back, you can really expose um, how they move energy, how they move the ball throughout their shot. That's really good. What else could you do? So you st we did standstill shots, catch and shoots. You could be on the move, right? So now you could be on the move. Show me some movements that you could do. Yeah, so you could slide your feet. What, what other mo movements could you do? Yeah, on a run now, on a jog, what else? You could touch and backpedal, right? Like that's a classic one, touch the ball, touch it. Yeah, come touch it. And then backpedal, backpedal, yep. Right? So all those things are going to challenge your, your shooting, but your balance, right? So now just shooting on the move, okay? You can shoot at the same range, or if you feel you want to play with the range, you can do that too. All right, ready? Here we go. Good. Yeah. All right, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Good movement. A jog. Good. Okay, now can you change pace? Because that seems too easy. Change pace with your movement. You know what that means? Okay, let's see. Yeah, so slow to fast, fast to slow. Let's see. Good, that's it. First. Yep. Yep. Good. Right? Okay. And there may be a time where we say, okay, can we back this up a bit? But the idea is, is the players finding their sweet spot. Right? They talk about this, this range as being around 50 to 70%. Um, where you're challenged, right? So you're mindful that you're challenged and you're going for it, but you realize that, you know, you're not starting to get discouraged with, with what's happening, right? Like if you came out here and missed, you know, 20 shots in a row, you might have to stop completely because it's, it's taking you off the path. You're getting distracted with the outcomes. So we want to, as, as coaches, put our players in situations where they can adapt, they can grow, they're challenged, um, but we're recognizing where they're at, you know, recognizing what that sweet spot is for them, but also having a back and forth, a dialogue with where you're at, right, and, and how you can challenge. Because the biggest thing is when you work on shooting, you're not going to always have me, right? You're not always going to have me. So we want to try to get you to a point where you can be intelligent and know how to work out. You know, what are the things i got to focus on? Again, you think about mindfulness, awareness. What are all my options? How could I do this? Great. Where should my attention go? Where should my energy go? You know, how do I put myself in that sweet spot? Okay, now what are you going to do to take action? You know, what are you going to do to really put yourself in that spot to give yourself a chance to get better, right? Is it going to the gym a couple times a week? Is it, is it playing with certain people, right? So again, that's how we just use mindfulness in this, um, in this idea of finding the sweet spot with shooting, right? Okay, good job, brother. That was awesome. Yeah, really good. Really good. Yeah, give me a round of applause. All right. Okay, um, the next thing with shooting Okay, so one thing, let's get somebody new. Let's get somebody new. Who's got it? Yes, sir. You got it. All right, you want to use this one? All right, okay, cool. Okay, so the other thing we start to talk about is, okay, let's say our MIT is balance. We want to focus on, on feel-good reps, right? So we find that sweet spot where you're challenged, but what feels good, right? Do you feel like you're, you're balanced? And now we're just going to focus on those reps. If you make shots and you're not balanced, and your focus is balance, those reps don't count. You know, so now it's all about feel-good reps. So we'd go through the same kind of thing. I'll put you through a drill. All right, I'll put you through a drill. Let's put you in the corner, okay? And all you're going to do is touch the ball, touch the ball, back up, okay? It might be a catch and shoot. You might be on the move, on a slide, so keep sliding, right? But we're just going to work different movements, okay? Focused on balance, right? So you feel balanced, evenly distributed, and if you feel balanced, you say yes. Tell me yes. We count that rep. If you, if you don't, you say no. So just start to tune into your body. All right? 
You got this? You ready? Okay, so just work, work in your range. Yeah, work in your range. Okay, so you can touch it to start. Yeah, touch it. Back out. Catch and shoot. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's slide. Slide, 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 slide. Go up, slide. That's why. Yeah, you got it. Slide. Yep. You got it. So every time, what do you got to tell me? What do you got to tell me every time you shoot? Yes, if it's balanced, or no, if it's not. Okay, you got to say it loud enough where I can hear it. It doesn't matter if they can. I'll repeat the response. You got it? Okay. Here we go. Touch. Back. Okay. What is that? Uh, yes. yes? Okay. Good. Can we go back? Yeah. Cool. Yes? So two yeses. Back up. Good. Now we slide this one. What's that? Is that a yes? No? Okay. Slide. Slide. Okay. All right. What do you give yourself? A yeah? All right. Good job, man. Good job. That's all right. Take a seat, brother. Okay. So now he may be saying yes is on all of them, you know, and then we watch the tape back and he wasn't balanced, right? So then we, we might get a video, you know, a, uh, a phone out and we, you know, film from the different angles. We'll film from behind, from the sides, from the front. And now we start to say, well, you said yes five times. And what happened? You know, you, you weren't on balance. So it's starting to be honest with yourself, but also just really understanding what balance means. Cool? All right. Uh, okay. Okay, so here's what I want everybody to do. I want you to get comfortable, and I want you to get grounded. I believe, here's the thing with this mindfulness stuff. You know, I can come out here, and I can pretend like, like mindfulness, like I know all this stuff about mindfulness, but the thing is, man, if I'm not practicing mindfulness, if, if I'm not regulating, if I'm not reading my state, reinforcing the state consistently, man, it doesn't matter, right? So I think if, if you're interested in teaching this stuff to your players, man, you've got to take this thing on. You've got to lean in, and you've got to say, hey, this is going to be me, right? Or at least take parts of it. You know, you might not jump in the deep end right away, but you've got to practice it. So coaches, I want to see if you can do this. So see if you can get just comfortable, Okay, and put your notebooks down if, if you get a notebook. Okay, lean back. Okay, and all I want you to do is I want you just to get grounded. All right, so you get grounded by feeling your feet on the floor. Okay, so you feel your feet on the floor, you feel your bum on the bench. Okay, you might feel your back up against the chair. Okay, and if you haven't already, you can close your eyes. Right. You might rest your hands in your lap. And so once you settle in and you feel pretty comfortable, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this, this really brief meditation to kind of get you to start to tune into your body, right? Recognize what you're feeling, um, start to describe what you're feeling. Okay, so we're grounded, you feel balanced, feel your left leg, feel your right leg. Okay, feel how you're sitting, like are you leaning on your left side, your right side, you feel pretty upright, suspended. Awesome. Right, and then now I want you to focus on your breath. So if it helps, you can put your right hand on your chest, your left hand on your belly, you can breathe in through your nose, and out through your nose. Now, one of the things is, as you're going through this, it's not easy to do this. Why do you think, you know, most of the world doesn't do this kind of stuff? Well, it's hard to sit down. We're distracted all the time. You know, like I said, we got the phone buzzing. We're on our laptops. We got all these apps and, and tabs open. So you might feel a desire to escape get the heck out of here, right? And you got to be able to sit with that a bit. Awesome. So you're breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. We're gonna, just going to do a, a very basic body scan. And you're going to start at the top with your head. And all I want you to do is just start to tune in to specific uh, descriptions. You know, what are you really feeling? What are you experiencing? And see if you can use, you know, one-word adjectives. Okay, so when you think about your mind, is it scattered, 
sluggish, foggy, clear, calm, empty. And as you go through this, you're not trying to do anything about it. You know, you feel a certain way, I got to fix it. You know, I got to fix it. No, man, you're not trying to fix it. You're just going to be with it. Just experience it. Then just kind of move down, move down to your throat. Right? Is it opened? Is it relaxed? Is it light? Is it free? Sticky, clogged, congested, stuck. Now focusing on your heart, right? Is it open? Is it closed? Is there tension? Is it heavy? Keep moving down to the belly. You might feel that desire to escape, but training your mind to stay with it. Is your belly warm? Is it cool? Is it energized? Connected? Now just move into your limbs, your arms and your legs. Is it tight, sore, ready, cramped? Tight, hydrated, dry. Right, and then just start to feel your body again. So feel your feet on the floor, bum of the bench, back up against the chair. And then when you're ready, open your eyes on an exhale. And then just start to take in the space. You know, just start to see what's around you. So what you're doing is you're taking the time to read what's, what's going on in your body. If you can read and tune into your body, you can start to regulate your state, put yourself in a place where you're more present, you're more available. Um, you know, you can serve people around you, you can focus your attention, right? You can learn, you can recall information. Right? Cool. All right, so uh, last thing, last thing. So we got like 14 minutes. I'm just curious. If you had one big challenge with your team this year, right, or with your player development, what would be one thing that you're thinking about, you know? And maybe anything that relates to any kind of basketball mindfulness that we've talked about. Any questions? Adam, do you think we could pass around the mic too if people have questions? What's your biggest challenge? Think about your biggest challenge. You know? Yeah, you got one? Do you need the mic? So confidence. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's kind of an interesting thing. Like when I was a university coach and we had freshmen, you know, first year redshirt players, you know, they would struggle back and forth with their confidence. And I think the biggest thing that we did, like when I was at University of Regina, I was doing this full time, it was like, man, having, having a plan, you know, having a, a conversation with the athlete and saying, hey, what are we going to focus on? We dial into one thing, and then, then we have a process, right? And we, we see if we can get to a point, if I have the time and the resources to track their improvement, right? Like what's the tangible evidence of you getting better? And then if you can have those small wins and you have a vision for yourself, man, you're a lot more stable and confident. But if you go into a situation and you're not communicating with your coach, you don't have a plan, you don't see how you're getting better, well, man, oh, man, how to be, how to be confident, that's a, that's a beast, man. That, that's, that's tough to do, right? Yeah, really good question. Confidence is probably the biggest thing players ask me about. And I think if we can, if we can help players with that, man, it's a good move. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Concentration and focus. Is that, is that it? Cool. Yeah, I think just even what we were doing there, doing the body scan, tuning into the breath, uh, coming back to the breath, focusing on body parts, is just a really basic way. 
right? We've all had it. You went to a practice, or even before the practice, you took two hours to prepare for a practice. You put your plan together. Everything was really tight. Amazing plan. You show up. You're ready to go. The kids, five minutes in, you know, capable of making layups and being focused and concentrated, not doing it. You know, they're not, they're not there. They're not present. They've got other things going on, and they're just not competing like you want to, right? So taking three to four minutes, five minutes before practice, coming back to the breath, focusing on the breath, using the breath as an anchor, right? The, the breath is the greatest disruptor of any kind of patterns. And the biggest thing is it's an intrinsic tool. You have the breath as you're born, you, you inhale, as you die, you exhale. It's with you for your whole life. I'm not, I don't have to worry about anybody else. I got that tool with me. So I use the breath to concentrate with the athletes. I think it's, it's everything. Yeah, thanks, Kev. One more question. Who's got it? Yeah, translation between practice and games. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So what, I'm just curious, what kind of strategies have you already used that have been helpful versus the strategies that haven't helped you? You know, what stands out? Like, like the, the concepts that you're, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so the biggest thing, and I'm sure Chris talked about it, you've integrated game-like practice. So you've given them an opportunity to really practice the situations that you want them to execute in the game. Awesome. So that's, that's a pretty good foundation. Um, have you watched video with the kids? Right. So, you know, if you have the time watching video, like when I started doing video with the kids, I, we'd watch 20 minutes, 30 minutes of video. You know, now when I work with players, we might do a minute of clips or two possessions. And then just, again, okay, now we're going to go back on the floor and practice. And we'll do it in practice. You know, we'll film it, put it on the laptop, watch it with the group, and come back to it. You know, just to make sure, again, everybody's on the same page. We're good. Go to the game. And now, again, where's their attention? What's, what's their focus? Right? When you go into the game, before the game, how many things do you talk about? Yeah, so maybe you just focus on one thing. Yeah, you just say today, you know what? I'm just going to focus on offense. I'm just going to coach offense. And in the beginning, man, it might lose you some games. But that's just, that's the game you're playing. You're playing development and, and, and long term. We're trying to win in the end, you know? Yeah, that's really good. Good question, Alex. Yeah. Okay, I got a few more minutes. Any, anything else with mindfulness or, Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, so missing shots. It's interesting. It's like I miss one, I'm okay. You know, I start to miss two or three shots. It affects me. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about like getting just getting back on D? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's a really good point. I mean, so what we talk about, my friend Ross McMains, he's like a legend. He's like an OG. I think he's like one of the best basketball minds in the world right now. He talks about uh, zero leg time, right? So when uh, the shot goes up, on the air time of the shot, we need to see people making a choice, right? Whatever your philosophy is. Either you're going on the glass, you're getting back, but there's no indecisiveness, there's no hesitancy, Right? You got to go. And he calls that no leg time. That's his term, right? So when they watch video and they stop it, they want to see that, right? Like, okay, stop it, freeze frame it right now, and look at our stance, right? We might be a little upright, or are we in that sprinter stance ready to go either way, you know? So I think, I think video is really good. Um, I, to me, that, that's what I lean into most with those kind of things and having those conversations, and then, again, are they, are they present? Are they ready? Are they tired? You know, maybe they're tired. You know, and, and now it's like, okay, time to get some rest, sit on the bench, get right, and then come back when you can do it, you know, when you can really do it. That's our standard. Yeah. Video is a game changer, 100%. Yeah. 
We, well, we had a player, when I, was in, when I was in Regina, we had a player, it didn't matter what I told her, didn't matter what I told her, but as soon as she saw it on video, she's like, I got you, coach, no problem, I got you. So, you know, some people are just a lot more visual, and uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what you say, you know, they have to experience it for themselves, yeah, I like that, right on. Okay, I got one more question, and I'm bouncing. Come on, give me some. Who's got it? You got one. All right, player go. Yeah. What do you got? Chemistry. Team chemistry. Like connecting with your teammates. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what do, you, what do you do to connect with your teammates? What's your strategy right now? Yeah, getting off the floor and having conversations. I was watching the, was it Brooklyn and uh, Toronto the other night? Last night? They were talking about that with, uh, I think Kyrie Irving was saying it. Kyrie was saying, hey, well, these road games are really good for us because it gives us the opportunity to really connect, have food, you know, vibe that way. So I, th- I agree 100%. I think, you, I think you already know the answer. I think you already know it. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you want to connect with me, uh, my thing's Play Free Basketball. My email is johngiesbreck5 at gmail.com. Appreciate you.